Oh, and welcome to another wonderful edition of Million Dollar Peddlers. I'm Paper Guy, and today we're going to talk about how you have to sell your items on eBay. And you're looking at me right now and you're going, well, duh, of course you have to sell your items on eBay. It actually wasn't always that way. Um, I go back to some of the early years of eBay, and you could pretty much sell about anything that anything, basically. Uh, as a matter of fact, you didn't even have pictures back then. It was a rigmarole in order to get pictures. I remember there was something called a Twain Acquire or something like that, and you had to have a special program in order to put pictures up. So basically, you didn't put pictures up. You just listed an item, and, you know, Life Magazine, January 2nd, 1955, and it would sell, and it would sell for more money than it goes for now, and that was without a picture. So when eBay first started, you didn't have to sell anything. Things would just sell themselves. It's not that way anymore. There's a lot of people up there listing and there's a lot of competition. And that was one of the lessons that it took me a long time to learn. A um, Couple of different reasons why. Uh, first, I came out of the sports card and comic book area where you can't really say too much about certain things. I mean, if you've got a 1972 Rod Carew card, you can say 1972 Tops Rod Carew Maybe list Minnesota Twins, put the card number down, and it happens to be a high number, you put high number. That, you know, that's pretty much it. You can put down the condition as well. Beyond that, there really isn't a lot more that you can say about that card. Um, and even now, in the sports card area, most of the time, that's pretty much what the people will list. Uh, then you get into things like comic books. You know, uh, uh, Spider-Man number 268 is a Spider-Man number 268. Sure, you can list who the artist is or you can list who's on the cover. But beyond that, there's not a lot of different ways to sell a comic book beyond what it is. Um, there's a little bit of a, of a difference there with some of the comic books because people do collect cover types. So if you get into some of the funny animal stuff or the Archie stuff, um, you know, be certain that you list what's going on in the cover. You know, if it's a, it's a Dagwood comic book and he's mowing the lawn, List Dagwood mowing lawn. Um, there are people out there that would collect lawn mowers. Uh, you know, list mowing lawn mower. Uh, people will collect that. People will collect the golf covers. People will collect the swimming covers, the beach covers, uh, the parasailing covers, the hang gliding covers, airplane covers, whatever. So you can actually do that and get some extra sales out of that. And that's basically what the funny animals. Uh, and the Archies. And those are fairly easy to find because the collectors, a lot of them don't really put much value in them. So you can pick those up fairly cheap at flea markets and that sort of thing. So don't be afraid to take a chance on that kind of stuff. You can usually pick it up for you know under a dollar a comic without any trouble at all. Um, so somebody's got a box of those, ask what he wants for the whole box. You could be walking home pleasantly surprised and then you can sell it on your own by listing what's on the cover on a lot of that stuff so it's it's worth investing in that uh, that's a way that you you add value and that you sell your item um, the other reason why I didn't used to do that was I was somewhat of a volume seller I'm, I'm a little bit small but I was a volume seller um, and again part of it was the mindset coming from where I was coming from but if you've got a June 28th, 1962 Time Magazine, it's a June 28th, 1962 Time Magazine. Uh, and if you, even now if you go on eBay and you take a look, most people will list who's on the cover. That will be the extent of what they do. Uh, I'm telling you, you can actually raise your prices and make more sales by selling your item. And by that I mean take the time to go through it. Uh, put the table of contents up. And you'll be surprised on a lot of this stuff, you know, maybe there's some article in there about Rosa Parks, maybe there's some article in there about John F. Kennedy, maybe there's some article in there about Mickey Mantle. There'll be a lot of stuff hidden throughout that nobody else notes. And you'll be the person that's mentioning it, and you'll be the person with the highest price on it, but you'll also be the person making the sale. Um, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with charging a higher price than everybody else, because you're doing the work to earn the money you're actually scanning the table of contents. You're actually going through and finding the thing. You're, you, while you're going through it, you're checking to make sure it's complete. So you're guaranteeing the magazine is complete. A lot of people aren't doing any of that stuff. So you're adding value and you're being rewarded with a higher price. 
And you'd be amazed uh, a lot of the stuff that's out there that nobody else mentions. You get into the, the mid to late 1960s in any of the news magazines, there's probably things going on there with the civil rights movement, uh, the race riots, all that sort of thing. Those things sell. Uh, there could be some article in there about Charles Manson just kind of hidden in, another, in a magazine without it being noted on the cover. You note it and you're going to make the sale. So as time goes on, you'll begin to learn you know, what sells things and you will take the time to sell your item. And again, I, I know that just sounds like common sense, but go on eBay and take a look at your competition. Most of them are not selling the item. Most of them are still back in the, the 2005 era where you put something or other up and it would sell. It's not like that anymore. There's a lot of competition in a lot of different places for people to buy at. So when you're holding the item in your hand, ask yourself, why would somebody want this? Take the time to page through it. What spin can you put on it that nobody else has done? What do you see in there that nobody else has noted that you can get top dollar for the item? And every once in a while, you'll be really, really surprised. Uh, you'll get very good dollars out of, out of an item. I had a, an Esquire magazine that I noted jazz uh, was in there, put a couple of pictures up with the jazz articles, and it went for almost $200. I was not expecting that whatsoever. I think I started the auction at like $30, something like that. I went for almost $200. Um, so you'll be surprised with, with how much things go for when you actually take the time to sell your items instead of trying to have your items sell themselves. They will sell themselves, but it takes a long time and you won't get top dollar. So take the time, sell your items, and you'll be surprised. Thank you and stay safe.